agenda item 5, AR 18-025, Petition for Amendment to the Zoning Regulations, Section 27-239A, Table of Uses, Old Post Road Realty, LLC. The following documents were received. Letter from Ken Dobreiner, Managing Member of Old Post Road Realty, LLC, dated 12-20-2018, with petition for amendment to regulations, change of zone boundary, slash zone classification, and a narrative with the following sections. Petition to amend zoning regulations text. In support of this petition and conclusion, also received were a letter from the Economic Development Commission dated 1-30-2019 in support of this application. A review letter from Attorney Richard Roberts from Halloran and Sage dated 1-25-2019. An email from Consulting Town Planner John Muskowski uh, saying no sign is required for the zoning regulations for public hearing. Referral response from J.H. Torrance Downs, Deputy Director of Rivercog, dated 12-27-2018. Receipts showing referral requests were sent to the Town of Killingworth, the Town of Westbrook, and the Town of Madison on 12 27, 2018. Referral response mailed certified to Marcy Ballant, Connecticut DEEP, dated 12 31, 2018. Response letter received from Marcy Ballant, Connecticut DEEP, dated 1 30, 2019. And a letter dated 1 29, 2019, in opposition to the application from James J. Connolly. Is there an agent or uh, applicant present for this application? Please state your name and um, do you need the microphone. I'm not sure. Uh, my name is Joanne Wiley, and I'm here for Old Post Road Realty. Mm -hmm. Good evening, I'm Joanne Wiley, and I'm for, here for Old Post Road Realty on the requested language amendment. The request, it's, do you want me to read what's requested? Okay. Make your presentation. Go ahead. We're requesting that the special exception would allow the development of a recreational facility in the I-2 zone. And that's what we're requesting. We're requesting that it extends from existing to an authorized reconstruction of a building that was damaged because of an act of nature, storm, etc. open up the public portion of this hearing. I wanted to remind the public at this point that this is a public hearing. I have proposed an amendment to our zoning regulations. The change would allow, by special exception, the development of commercial indoor recreation facilities in the I-2 zone. Currently, such facilities are allowed in the I-1 zone, but not in the I-2 zone. This is not an application for a specific development or a specific use at any particular site. Comments need to be limited to the matter under consideration. The matter under consideration is a, as this amendment to the regulations. Attempts to bring up other topics will be stopped. They'll be stopped because people who wish to make relevant comments have the right to be heard without the delays and distraction caused by irrelevant comments. And irrelevant comments will be gaveled down. 
if the regulations are changed at some future time, an application is made for a special exception to develop a commercial indoor facility, a recreation facility, then there would be a public hearing concerning that application. That would be the appropriate time to bring up the concerns, whether they be noise or odors or traffic, about that specific proposal and use. And to reiterate, this hearing is not the appropriate time for those concerns because there's no application of that nature under consideration. I want to call your attention to the uh, ground rules for planning and zoning public hearing. There were some copies on green paper that were on some of the chairs as you came in. We have laminated copies over by where the sign-up sheets are. I urge you to take a look at them as you're waiting in line to um, comment if that's what you're going to do. When there are a large number of people who wish to speak, the chair requests that you limit your initial comments to three minutes. Uh, we're operating a timer. If three minutes is not enough time to make your point, you're welcome to go to the end of the line and wait a second for it. Our purpose here is to gather information. If somebody else has already made the same point that you wish to make, it's sufficient to state that you agree. This is a hearing, it's a legal proceeding. The atmosphere should resemble a court of law, it's not a rally. Applause, shouting, cheers, boos, it's foot stamping, such displays are not appropriate conduct. It's, if it's not appropriate in a court of law, it's not appropriate here. Speakers are expected to be respectful in their comments, no speaker may ask for a show of hands or any other indication of audience support for his or her position. Personal attacks or insults, whether they're directed at the applicant, the commissioners, fellow citizens, will not be tolerated. Nor will profanity or threats or slurs of any nature. Anybody engaging in such conduct will be stopped. Everybody has the right to be heard. The courts have determined that this includes non-residents, non-voters, non-citizens, everyone. The hearing is being recorded. To help the clerk prepare the hearing minutes, we request that you print your name and address on the pad. You're required to state your name and address orally when you start speaking. If you haven't printed it for us, then the minutes will use our clerk's choice for the spelling of your name, and that may not be the same as yours. Per our bylaws, we'll start with those speaking in support of the application, then with those opposed, and then with those who don't wish to be classified either way. After we hear from the public, the applicants or their agents will have another opportunity to speak to address the issues raised. If the applicants introduce any new information, then the public will have another opportunity to comment, but only to address the new information. These are the same rules for every public hearing, but we're reiterating it tonight because of the large number of people who are here, because that's why we have to enforce the three minute rule. I would ask our attorney to, who happens to be here this evening, to comment in addition on the proceedings that we're about to undertake. <coughs> No, I think you said it very well. I think probably the most important thing to emphasize for the public is the difference between a specific development application. Uh, certainly any zone change, any regulation amendment is going to be proposed, if it's not by the commission, by someone who has a property or, or might have an interest to do something in the future. But that specific plan, what they might do or, or that particular owner do, is not really what is before you. It is the policy of whether or not that change um, should be adopted that would allow the commission to consider a special exception. Um, and that's also outlined uh, in uh, uh, John Giskowski, the town planner's report. He does a good job of explaining that as well. So that's the focus that I think you pointed out well and that the commission uh, or the public should adhere to. You can make the uh, microphone available. <coughs> Uh, 
Uh, we'll start with those who wish to speak in favor of this application. John Allen, 15 Hoopers Way. Um, this is a letter to the Planning Zoning Commission from the Economic Development Commission. The Clinton Economic Development Commission fully supports amending zoning regulations to allow consideration of special exemptions for developing development of recreational facilities within the town's I-2 zones. This EDC endorsement is not in any way meant to support any specific development. Each application must be evaluated on its initial merits, individual merits, vetting a specific applicant, the proposed usage, the site plan, compatibility with the POCD, and any other relevant regulations. However, in general, making it possible for additional recreational development is a very positive move for Clinton. Rec recreational facilities usually have relatively low, relatively low uh, envi envi environmental impact while providing a venue for recreation to residents of Clinton and neighboring towns as well. The multiplier effect are also beneficial to the town. Development of approved recreational facilities would develop the town economically in many ways, including generating more taxes, attracting visitors, thereby increasing commerce for nearby businesses, provide opportunities for complementary business and services, as well as promote the image of Clinton as a vibrant, healthy town. Respectfully submitted, John B. Allen. while you're waiting at the same time. Uh, thank you. My name is Ken Skidmore. I live at uh, 33 Uncas Road, and I'm uh, here to speak in support of the uh, change zoning amendment. I'd like to recommend it for a number of reasons. I think, number one, I think it would be an asset to the town in regards to uh, adding a, a recreational resource. Uh, I think, number two, in regards to uh, the health benefits we would provide to the town. And I think, number three, it will uh, provide an economic benefit. Um, I think I speak to you as someone that's been involved in bringing approximately uh, 100 people from the town of Clinton uh, to travel across uh, Europe to, to play in soccer tours and uh, both parents and players I've worked in town in regards to uh, as a coaching director and, and significantly involved in youth soccer over the years. Um, there's a, a large passion and need for, for the resource in town, um, not only for, for soccer but also for lacrosse and other sports. So I think it truly would be a, a needed amenity. I think if you add that to the backdrop of the fact that uh, we will be losing a gym coming up soon for the Pearson School, uh, I think it underscores the need in, uh, for additional resources for outdoor activities. Uh, as we all know, there's a, a well-known uh, need for additional fields, etc. Uh, significant number of people from the town traveled up, up outside of the town to uh, attend other facilities of, of a like nature. Uh, and I think it really truly would be a, a, a very good benefit to the town. Uh, I'd say lastly that I know there's some people that have some questions in regards to, um, you know, I, I was against the, the previous application for use of this property. I, I trust and believe in the people that have come forward that are partnering with them to, uh, to make this happen. So uh, again, I'd just like to speak that I think it would be a good amenity to the town, um, and I think it would be a well-needed resource to uh, both our kids as well as uh, adults and other families. Thank you. I think you should remind everybody that we're not supposed to be talking about use. It could be anything. You've got to stick to this, not to the uh, issue. It's it was. It's a sports complex. That's what we're talking about. Kristen Cafferty, River Road. Um, I would like to agree with both gentlemen, primarily just that it is a sports facility. Um, a recreational facility is needed in this area, not just for Clinton, but surrounding towns. Um, I am a parent that does do significant traveling to um, go to similar facilities. They are a good distance away and are extremely crowded, so I do think it is something very positive for Clinton to look outside of what we have already coming into town. I think it would be a nice addition. It would also bring people across through Clinton from the outlets and things like that to come to a facility on the other side. Mary Jo Phelps, Delwood Avenue. Um, I would also like to speak in support of this application because it seems to me adding a use and so that these properties could be potentially developed. Um, why not add a use that's so positive like that and can bring uh, revenue and people from surrounding areas to the town? Good 
evening. My name's Ed Green. I'm a resident of Guilford, Connecticut. Um, I am uh, a father of four daughters who attend Guilford High School, but my connection to Clinton is I'm also the director of coaching and a coach for a soccer, premier soccer club called Connecticut Rush. Uh, Connecticut Rush is a club who has close to 300 members on the shoreline. I'm the director of Connecticut Rush Shoreline, and we have close to a thousand soccer players um, in Connecticut in general. We're also part of an organization that's national, uh, based in Colorado, and there's about 50,000 Rush players across the country and international. Um, in Clinton, we have uh, close to 40 families that play in our organization, our soccer club. Um, primarily, we run from um, New Haven to New London, so many of the boys and girls from Clinton, if they didn't come to our club, they would travel to other communities uh, along the shoreline, and they would play in facilities that we're talking about here. Uh, typically turf or grass facilities, uh, and we are looking to develop our own facility. We tend to um, use fields in Guilford, Madison, North Brantford, Montville, and other towns and communities. Um, so if there was an opportunity to uh, develop some recreational facilities in the town of Clinton, we certainly are open to that. We've met with some town officials over the course of the last year. Um, but we're also looking at other communities. So we're, we're looking for a community that values recreational facilities for youth, uh, not just soccer. Um, but that's, um, that's, I, that's why I'm here, and that's why I support this application. Thank you. Hi, my name is Chris Passante, um, 57 Old Orchard Road, Clinton, Connecticut. Um, I'm here to speak in uh, favor of this. Um, I come from a perspective of a 47-year-old uh, resident of Clinton. I'm very proud of Clinton, and I um, really want to see the best for it. Um, I also uh, have seven children, uh, ranging from 21 to 5. Um, I'm also coming from the perspective of being very involved in youth sports. Um, I uh, am uh, Vice President of Softball Operations for Clinton Little League. I'm a coach for softball. Um, and uh, a coach of four basketball teams right now um, for um, basketball in town. Um, we have a lot of troubles from the youth perspective as far as uh, availability of gyms, specifically for basketball. Um, we built the beautiful Morgan Gym, which was very much in favor. We went from two gyms to one. When we're eliminating um, Pearson School, which, you know, I, I love Pearson School, but it was time to move on from that. Uh, we're going to lose another gym. Um, so we are in a uh, uh, disadvantage and as far as other towns are concerned. We have to have children. Um, I, have, I run a practice for eighth grade girls. Practice has to be at eight o'clock at night. They don't finish up till nine o'clock. Um, and that's just for the pure fact that we don't have gyms. Um, so there's definitely a need. Um, and uh, I do agree with what everybody else said um, that was spoken before. I think. Uh, for health reasons, it's great to have a, a healthy facility, and uh, I think uh, um, uh, there could be an economic development uh, with the project as well. So I am in support of it. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak in support of this application? Anyone else wishing to speak in support, in favor of this application, please come forward. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to this application, please come forward. <coughs> We're going to have to limit... Limit speakers to three minutes. You're welcome to go to the end of the line. Um, and uh, yes. second time. Do you, do you, do you to... Yes, yes, yes. yes. Speak your name and address orally. And, um, Vincent Semino, 26 Old Mill Road, Clinton. And um, I heard that there were a few speakers that spoke in favor of this. But what I really heard was that they're advocating health, recreation, sports. What we're talking about tonight 
is changing zoning. Zoning was established for a reason, to protect the residents and the town, and to plot basically where certain activities would take place. Uh, people buy adjoining properties because they know that the use next door is restricted. This is a blanket change of zoning that would then cause someone to now be living next to something that was never foreseen. For what reason? There was good reason given when the zoning was established. Why would you want to abandon that? So, uh, the concerns that were mentioned earlier somewhat, traffic, health and safety, uh, noise, those are the type of things that changing a zone would bring. You need to consider what that would do if every I-2 zone in the town was suddenly changed where it would allow an activity that would create greater noise, greater traffic, and potential health and safety issues. I am opposed to it, and I don't believe that it should even be considered at this point. Uh, I don't see why it's being considered at this point. Anyone who bought a property in an I-2 zone knew what the uses that were allowed were, and yet they bought it. Now they're trying to say, we want to do something else. That's not a good enough reason. Thank you. Uh, good evening, uh, Phil Singel, uh, James Hinson Drive. First, I want to make clear I'm only speaking for myself. These are my opinions only. This is really a tough situation. It's not a black and white one, which I think most of these land use decisions are. They're seldom black and white. The property owner here has already sued the town twice and may not hesitate to do so again. Let's not fall in a trap and increase the odds of another lawsuit or the previously proposed recycling facility or Excuse both. Yeah. Yeah. This is a, yeah. this is a, 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 a zoning regulation change. And you didn't say the same thing for the other people. Right. So what you. They, were the the they were talking about a recreational facility. This is what the change is. The same. I'd like for that to happen. Keep it even. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And point well, me, I, I would point out that that some of the comments that were made before were referring to the use. Thank and, you. And, and that's what were made before, and that should be now. So the persons who are speaking opposed should be, if they are, opposed to the proposed Thank use, you. not some other operators. So this is the, this is the uh, recreational use that's being proposed and not something related to a, a facility for uh, solid waste or recycling or anything of that nature. This is strictly recreation. And why are they mentioning the solid waste? They shouldn't. They shouldn't. Maybe I should talk to you folks. <laughs> the property owner's statements about a possible sports complex on Route 145, Route 145 sound good. No offense, but talk is cheap. If it sounds too good be, to be true, it probably isn't true. I would love a sports complex here as much as the next person, but there is no way I believe to ensure that this happens. Changing zone regs can certainly have unintended consequences, so being careful and deliberate with expert advice is an imperative. You, planning a zoning, will be praised if you can find a way to legally ensure this outcome. Within the confines of the zoning regs, property owners can do what they want with their property. Public pronouncements notwithstanding, you have to go no farther than a new CVS to see an example of this. Just as in life there are no guarantees, a shiny object looks good as a lure does to a fish. Also consider what is likely to be, be, be proposed in other I-2 zoning zoned properties as a result of the precedent that might be established here if the current request is approved. There's always unintended consequences. 
Many, many parents in town who don't understand the dangers of the zoning regs who have children playing youth sports will want this complex to be built, as would I. They might think it's if it's in the newspaper, it's gossip. Sure, I think we've reached the three-minute mark. If the gentleman wants to get to the end of the line based on the rules that you've established. Yeah, you three minutes. Mm -hmm. He has about two seconds. I stopped it during our debate. Whatever. So it's up to you, the members of Planning and Zoning, as our elected representatives, to do what's within the regs and the law, to do what is right for the town and support our plan of conservation and development. Finally, and pardon me for being a, a skeptic, but why would a property owner give up the use of a valuable rail siding to build something that doesn't need one? Thank you. Thank you. My name is Madeline Levely, 11 Iroquois Drive, Clinton, Connecticut. I am opposed to this amendment because I think the board, the town, has regulations in place to protect the citizens and to allow for logical, ordered development. I am concerned that this amendment, which is broad-based and involves not only the old Post Road property involves other properties on the I-2 zone could create more problems, unintended consequences. I strongly concur with the parents and other supporters of soccer facilities and gym facilities, exercise facilities for our town. We certainly need that but we don't need an amendment to have that happen. There are plenty of properties in town that could provide those services, and we don't need this amendment to have a proposal on, on board for changing the old Post Road property. When I hear the proposal, I can't help thinking of the music man. <laughs> Judith Hirsch, Founders Village. I am going to be redundant and say that it is a, uh, if the board allows the I-2 variance on Route 145, they are putting all I-2 zones to be changed throughout Clinton and, not, and it's not going to be for the best. And also, this variance that they want is in a flood zone and it has flooded many times before. Thank you. Pamela Fritz, um, 14 Old Road, Clinton. Uh, I'm speaking tonight on behalf of the Taxpayers Association. The Taxpayers Association is always concerned about residential properties that may be affected by changes in zoning. And this change of the I-2 zone could very, very much affect many residences who are, not, who are adjacent or in the neighborhoods to I-2. Uh, this amounts to uh, an opportunity for this applicant, in my opinion, to a spot zone, to apply for an application for a spot zoning, and, and if that happens, there's nothing to stop other people in I who own property in I-2 to say, we want to change, we want special exceptions to change our I-2 zone too. You're opening a Pandora's box. The applicant is asking PZC to approve a zone change, which amounts to spot zoning, but just for their own special needs. This will have widespread implications for all I-2 zones with no guarantees from the applicant or enforceable promises that they will ever build what they say they're going to build. Who is Old Post Road Realty? Well, remember the horrific industrial dump proposed for 145? You know, you let a lot of people say a lot of things about sports, so I'm going to finish what I've got to say. Remember the countless hours that were spent on your party? Sports is what's on the table. That's the application for. It's a change in the zoning regulations, okay? This is the same land with the same owners who want to build the sports con con complex. There is no history of these applicants having ever built a sports facility. 
relevant. Very relevant. It's not. There, there is no application. Mm -hmm. Just to remind the public, there is no application no for that. any particular property. This is the entire I-2 zone. Any property in the zone would be subject to, and for the, to the extent members of the public may be getting confused about what this is about, a special exception is a set of rules in your regulation that allows on a case-by-case -case basis a determination of whether a particular use is appropriate at that location. So what this application involves is changing the schedule of use to allow this kind of recreational facility to be considered by an applicant in the future. That applicant would have to present the application with respect to a particular property, show why they believe that the recreational facility uh, meets the various standards, and then this commission, after a public hearing, would decide whether that particular property is appropriate or not. The only thing that's before the commission tonight is whether or not that schedule of uses, where there's a list of things that if someone could ask permission for this commission, and if they're not on the list, they cannot. The application is to include that recreational use not for any particular property, so anything about a particular property is irrelevant to the application and should be deemed, in my view, out of order, Ms. Yeah, yes, uh, so if it could help the public understand what is before them and what is not before them, I think we could keep this on track. And if people want to oppose to this particular location, if an application comes in the future, they'll have every right to do with that. Yeah, this is an application for an amendment to regulations. Mm -hmm. If anybody ever comes forward with an application to put a, uh, a, anything at that site, that would be an application for a special exception. Mm -hmm. It would require an entirely new application for a special exception. It would be another special, another public hearing for a completely different application. That would be completely different. Okay. I'm aware of that. All right. That's not what's on the table here tonight. Opening the door for a special exception on an I-2 zone is a dangerous thing to do. But that's not what's on the table tonight. Speak to the <laughs> Yes, it is. <laughs> oh, boy, it's exactly what's on the table tonight. I guess I don't have any more time left because obviously I'm not allowed to speak anymore. You actually have but, 30 uh, seconds. Oh, thanks. Gee, thanks, Gary. Thanks. Okay, 30 seconds, okay? Just be very, very careful. This is a dangerous move. I'll leave it at that. And you, you do have a right, if you want more time to speak, to get it to the end of the line, as long as you're just not repetitive of what you said. So the three minutes is not intended to prevent people from uh, providing more information, but it's to address the fact that there's so many people here. Jim Townley, 11 year Court Drive. I agree with what Phil Singel said. Furthermore, Everyone in this room basically knows that this makes an entire mockery of the very idea of zoning. You're straining so hard to get a specific use for a specific owner in the door that's willing to make all these general uh, exceptions for that. But a damaged property, who are we talking about? Okay, a sports facility, you know that you're just giving a special fast track privilege to a bunch of developers that have come in and cultivated some people. Don't give me a lecture, I'm done. <laughs> All in the bag, folks. Is there anyone All else who is to speak in the opposition to this application? Is there anyone else wishing to speak in opposition to this application? Is there anyone wishing to speak without being classified either in opposition or in favor of this application? My name is Loretta Edie, 11 Hideaway, um, Clinton, Connecticut, and um, I haven't made up my mind about this, but I do need some clarification about what a special exception actually would allow them to do. If I could, um, what, how the zoning regulation, the statutes that allows for zoning works, is many uses are what's called permitted by right. They're on a list in a typical residential zone. You go in and get your building permit, and if it's a residential zone, you don't have to come to this commission. It's a use that's allowed by right in that particular zone. 
Um, you get your, your permit, great. The zoning statutes also allow for certain uses to be classified as special exception or sometimes called special permit uses. And what that means is that they can be allowed in the particular zone, but no one has a right to have them there. Instead, they have to come in with an application under a set of standards and the regulations and provide all the information um, that, you know, for example, hospitals are often special exception uses. Um, and they're not allowed everywhere, because in some places that might make sense, but in other places it doesn't, because of the traffic, because of the nature of the use, it's settled. So with, what this regulation would allow uh, would to add recreational facilities and reuse of buildings as a special exception use. A person who has property in an I-2 zone would not be entitled to use their building in that fashion any more than a person would be entitled to use any of the special exception uses. By definition, they're uses that could be considered to be approved, but they can only be approved after an application satisfying this commission that all of the considerations about the neighborhood, traffic, property values, et cetera, et cetera, are met. So what this would enable with an applicant to try to persuade this commission on a property that's in the I-2 zone that the, that the use is appropriate at that location. This application is simply to decide whether the commission should be allowed to even entertain that application. Because if right now someone proposed to do that, it would have to be denied because it's not included on the list of special exception uses. So does that explain what it's about? One property, one use. That's the only change. So it would not apply to all I? All I, this change would make, right now, I'll go back to my analogy, if you own residential all property that's zoned residential. There's a list of uses that are allowed in that zone. I understand right. that part. So right saying. now there's an I-2 zone, and there's a list of uses that are allowed. Right now, this recreational use is not on the list. So the application asks to have that added to the list so that any I-2 property owner in the future could come in with an application and demonstrate that that use is appropriate at that particular location. That particular use, so it would have to be a recreational use. An if indoor that's recreational what, indoor facility. recreational facility. So there's no way he could turn this around and put something else in there. Well, literally, the only thing that would happen here would be to allow somebody to come in with an application for for that particular use. There is no particular application. But to, to, if I if I'm, if I'm understanding your question, um, to to. If, if this was approved. Sorry, it's my ignorance but, of zoning. No, but right, this is a, you're understand. asking an important question. If if this text change is approved, and, and the section in the regulations that look like this, this is the table of uses. If the X is changed to an SE, which is to say, if commercial indoor recreation facilities are gone from prohibited in the I-2 to special exception, then that would allow those property owners to propose a commercial indoor recreation facility on their industrially zoned property. It would, and, and if they were to get permission for that, after they clear that high bar of proving that it will not create neighborhood problems, traffic, noise, odors, etc., they would be granted for a, 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 a special exception permission to have that recreational facility at that spot. If that applicant then subsequently, that property owner then subsequently started using that property for something other than a commercial recreation facility, that would be a violation of the law. That's a violation of zoning regulations because they did not have the permission. Oh, it's full. We only had two minutes left, John, but you used it up. <laughs> Motion to close the, the meeting. Do I think they answered my question. Yeah, we need to call it five minutes. No, I'll put it at nine o'clock. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Nine o'clock. Yes. Um, we're on uh, agenda item five, uh, a 
AR 18-025, and uh, we have asked for those who wish to comment without being uh, classified as either uh, in favor or opposed without being classified as either in favor or opposed to come forward to speak. Um, is there anyone who wishes to com comment without being classified as either in favor or opposed? Uh, is there anyone who wishes to I'm sorry, so we have, a, we have uh, folks that signed up, so that... That's me, I'm not sure. Okay, you're Harriet. Okay. <clears throat> okay, I'm Harriet Stein, I live at Six Mohawk Park Drive. Excuse me. Uh, I am speaking in opposition and I'm in full agreement with the, the idea that there is no need for zone change to have a sports center. I think a sports center is great and I'm very much in favor of it, but I don't think it's necessary. There is so much vacant property in this town where so, such a facility could be built, so I don't understand any reason for changing a neighborhood to accommodate something where it's not necessary to do so. Thank you. I'm Heidi Stein, same address. <laughs> I have a question. You're speaking in opposition or you're speaking without? Uh, what do you call it, general? General comments. Yes. Well, all right. I have all those who wish to speak in opposition been on? Um, you you'd already done that. You were that, that uh, she just happened to mention the opposition. She was speaking at the point in time of for persons who are neither okay. opposed right. to. So you're speaking uh, A general question. Okay. Are you Ms. Delgren? I am. Or with Mr. Slater, I have a question. Why is it that in this whole hearing we kept talking about a sports complex? But you would not allow anyone to suggest or talk about any other usage of this property. Could you please answer that question? Okay. The reason Absolutely. is that this is an app. The reason is that what is before us is an application to allow uh, indoor recreational facilities in the I-2 zone. There are many properties in the I-2 zone, uh, and this change of the zoning regulations would apply to the entire I-2 zone and allow indoor recreational facilities at these properties in the I-2 zone. This is a change in the zoning regulations. It does not have to do with a specific property. That's the point we've been trying to make all along. That this is a change in the zoning regulations for the I-2 zone to allow indoor uh, sports and uh, recreational facilities in the zone. It's a zoning regulation change. You keep saying a zoning regulation, but then you keep saying a sports complex. Yeah. It adds. It adds it is in that, that, pardon me, I'm just ignorant. It is specified that it's IZ, a change in the zoning regulation for a sports complex. It allows indoor recreational facilities as an, a use that is allowed in the I-2 zones. For currently, that use is not allowed in the I-2 zone. This would allow it by special exception in the I-2 zone. But would it allow any other construction, any other buildings in the I-2 zone? There are plenty of uses that are allowed in the I-2 zone already. And I think they should be discussed and not brushed aside as you've been doing all along. That there are no changes being allowed in the I-2 this is not an application to make any other changes to the uses that are already allowed in the I-2 zone. Looks like I can be the last one, so how long do I have? Three minutes. One minute. <laughs> then I'll come back. 
Then you go to the end of the line. Then I do the end of the line. Anyway, um, thank you all for your service uh, and your volunteerism. Um, and I'm not, I am here not to either for or against. Um, however, uh, clearly, uh, there are many things, as you mentioned, that can be done in the I-2 zone now. And there are places. Oh, I'm sorry, Kirk Carr and I asked me to come in south. And there are many places, or there are several places, where you can put indoor type A. Now, when you change uh, a, a zone, um, I mean, if somebody, like mentioned, we do have some empty lots in town. Many of them, I think, are in the I-1 zone, where you could put an indoor um, uh, recreational facility. So when you uh, allow it in another area, uh, you sort of add to the amount of places that you could put this recreational facility and in some ways disadvantage the people in the zone that is currently allowed in because they can go someplace else. I mean, there are many, many things that could be done in the I-2 zone, as you mentioned. And I guess one of the things that sort of strikes me is that when you're coming to town and you're buying some property in town, that you look at these regulations before you buy the property and if what's being, you know, what you want to do, you can't do there. Maybe you come in and have a, have a conversation with planning and zoning that is informal. I've been in those conversations. And this is a little bit late in the game. Um, I think one of the concerns I've heard, and nobody's said it tonight, and maybe our, your attorney could help weigh in on this, but one of the concerns is that, is that this is a legal gambit uh, that is with, with no desire to build what is said here, the, this recreational facility. And that what might be construed by doing this, by granting this, would be contract zoning, which in this state, other states it's allowed, but in this state it's not allowed, and might make your position in court on another matter that is not to be mentioned um, less uh, defensible. And uh, if that's the case, if this is a legal gambit to do something completely different, and we do know that the applicant has been liti litigious in the past. Um, and um, we're talking about maybe some changing of heart, or possibly not. But if this would weaken your position on the other matter that, that this applicant had before you, in which that applicant sued you, uh, I think you ought to consider that. Talk about the applicant. I'm not an attorney. No, no, wait a minute. I, and so I think you do need to, I think that's a legitimate question, is it not? I'd be happy to comment on that. Because, okay. I mean, I've heard that from people, and I think it's worth, worth saying. Um, but there are many things that could be done, and I, I appreciate the time you spent listening tonight. And uh, even though I'm at the end of uh, the, the line, I won't come back. And, uh, and thank up. you very much. <laughs> well done. Chairman, may I respond to one quick thing? Oh, all right. I don't want to talk. I just have a couple of questions. My name is Sonia Gibbs. I live at 15 Buell Court. My question, number one, what are some of the other uses for this zone? And where else in town are there these zones such that if this one is changed, does it change all of the other two zones? We have the table open for the answer to that. Right. Yes, the table. Oh. You want to some of that? I, I, I might. Um, Massage parlors, liquor stores. The, the table of uses is in the zoning regulations, section 27.2, which concerns non-residential uses. Uh, and there are, there are dozens of uses that are allowed currently in the I-2. Um, Examples. Rear lots. Restaurants, massage right. parlors, right. liquor right. stores. Excuse me, vendors. Madam Chairman, yeah. who are you recognizing in the room? I'm recognizing uh, John. Um, retail, business and professional uses, shopping centers, liquor stores, massage parlors, coffee houses, drive up windows, restaurants, vendors. I, I think those are it's a wide variety. There's a wide variety of uses. And the, the I 2 zone currently um, exists roughly on the east and west ends of town first um, to the to the east 
Uh, to the north of the railroad tracks into the east of Route 145, extending along East Main Street towards Westbrook. And then on the west part of town, uh, in the neighborhood of the Amtrak uh, corridor, uh, heading west as you go out of town, that, but does not extend all the way down to Route 1. So it's north of Route 1. So is this discussion tonight just for this one property on 145? No, 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 no. So if it were changed, it would change other properties too? Yeah. It would not change anything except for the potentially allowable uses at some point in the future following a special exception application. It's basically, you, if you are an owner of property in the I-2 zone, anywhere in the I-2 zone, you would now have a new possibility for your property. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. Yeah. This adds one more potential use to that list that John Miskowski just read. Okay. And just one, one point of clarification for, for Mr. Carr's point. Um, this applicant did come for a preliminary conversation uh, in the, the December meeting. Uh, they came uh, to discuss this specific potential new use and were directed by the commission to work with staff to craft language that might be acceptable. So th there was some forethought. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 Madam Chairman, can I have our, our attorney address Mr. Clark's questions about the contract? Be, no, be, happy, be happy to. Um, there's a couple of concepts that are they're somewhat related. Uh, but you heard, I think Ms. Uh, Ms. Fritz mentioned earlier the concept of, of spot zoning. Um, and spot zoning and contract zoning are kind of related in the sense that uh, your job is to look at the interests of the public in general and the community in general. You can't make a deal that says, I promise I'm going to bring a project in of, of a particular sort if you change my zone to something so that there is a quid, a quid pro quo that I will not give money to the town, or I will not build uh, a new fire department, or I will not put up um, something unless you make a change. That's a contract zoning. You can't do that. You can't negotiate that. Spot zoning is similar in the sense that rather than take the interest of the public in general, you decide that you are going to take an isolated part of property and you change a zone for that one unique area of for the benefit of a property owner and to the detriment of, of the community, that's a concept of spot zoning, which generally doesn't you know, it doesn't exist anymore because what the courts really look at is do you have a good public policy reason? Have you looked at it uh, in, in that fashion as opposed to for an individual? The public hearing tonight, I think the commission has done a good job of trying to keep the on track that this is a policy decision that affects the entire I-2 zone not any individual property. So I have no concerns whatsoever um, with the commission having heard however it, however it acts uh, that it is deciding based on the, the considerations of what's policy in the town and not any, under any threat of litigation or anything of the sort. I, I have no concerns that what happened tonight would put anyone in any advantageous or disadvantaged position and in fact it is almost impossible to reverse policy-making decisions that commissions make. And that's the role you're in tonight, is, is that of a policymaker. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak uh, regarding this happening? Good evening. Have you uh, given us the spelling of your name? Uh -huh. Tom Riccio, 175 Cavalry Road. And uh, I had a question of when the last time the I-2 Zoning was amended or changed. It would take some time, I think, to look that up. And as a past member on Inland Wetlands and now on Shellfish Commission, I understand the concerns about setting precedent, uh, changing rules, especially on Inland Wetlands with the 100 foot rule. We've run into that uh, on previous projects. So um, from the table of uses, it looks like the regulations for, uh, generally the use table for 27.2 were last updated in approximately 2015. There were several changes, uh, including uh, numbers of seats in uh, coffee houses, including the incentive, or the uh, interchange development zone, right. 
um, as well as vendor licenses was, was added in 2015. And actually, commercial recreation facilities who did that for I-1? Was, was added for I-1 back in 2015, so it's been about four years. Right. Three and a half. So, uh, I understand concerns on both sides of, of, the, of the issue. I believe the answer lies obviously somewhere in the middle. But with the changing of the zone, uh, I think one has to consider what was there was a warehouse. And before the expected application comes in, I would recommend that everybody in the board goes to this, goes to Mockville to see why the world of indoor sports. And to, you'll have a picture in your head of what hopefully can be built in Clinton. And it's basically a warehouse. And that's what was there before, it was a warehouse. So that's my two cents. No application. I understand. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your time and service on the board. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak? Come forward, sign up. Thank you. Uh, just a short comment. Your name and address? David L. King, 22 Kelsey Town Road, Clinton. The rule of law, and I'm not a lawyer, but once you set a precedence, lawyers typically go back through volumes and volumes of information to find out about that precedent. And once you do that, you may wish you hadn't changed the rules. I came into this town in 62 and there was no zoning whatsoever. Now we have zoning. When I first moved here, the neighbor, three-eighths of a mile away, his cows and his horses would go through my yard. It's a precedent when you change the rules to stop that. So I strongly recommend you think about it very carefully about changing a rule that's already been in place. The people that put the zoning rules in years ago had their heads screwed on pretty tight. We don't want to unscrew it. Thank you. By the way, I am a sports fan. Is there anyone else who uh, wishes to speak um, on this application? You make another comment. This is the end of the line. Hi, Karen Gardner of Anna Lane and Clinton. Um, I just want to confirm something, just from what I've been hearing through the night. Um, so the change in zone for the two or whatnot um, is simply to add another use to what's already existing in the uses. So a recreational facility would be added to massage parlors, restaurants, et cetera, from what you said from your previous list. Yes, that's correct. Well, correct? Uh, almost. Uh, it already exists, the, ca the category of commercial recreation facilities already exists and is allowed currently in one zone, which is the I-1, okay. um, which is the, the large Unilever facility that's in the I-1 zone. Um, what the applicant is asking is that that use, which already exists, be now allowed in a new zone in town. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not a new use, it's, it's a use being applied to a new area. Correct. But, so my understanding is that this current zone, uh, 1A or whatnot, can have restaurants, massage parlors, coffee houses, and that would not have to be approved 
I mean, by those are mostly special exception uses. They would require public okay. hearing and application. Yeah. Okay. So it's an added use to that zone. Correct. Just so, because I feel like there's confusion in that. So that's why I just wanted to clarify. Thank you. Vincent Cimino again. Well, there is a lot of confusion, and uh, one of the things that would have been very helpful is if we had a map of Clinton that identified all of the I-2 properties so that people could really see what's being affected and what the potential is. Um, there are many properties, as was already said, uh, available if someone wants to put up a sports facility. And the, the people who purchased the property knew that they couldn't put up a sports facility according to the zoning regulations as they stood. But I would like to propose that if you even consider this thing that would have such a profound effect on the town that you qualify it this way, that maybe you consider a use like that if it will not increase traffic increase noise or uh, in any way negatively potentially affect the health and safety of citizens. I'm, I'm, I'm suggesting this for every I-2 property in Clinton. So that way, someone who purchased a piece of property, never wanting to live next door to something that would create higher traffic, more health and safety risk, and other negative things that they would consider negative to the quiet enjoyment of their property would would be comfortable with the fact that it would not. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak to this uh, application? Anyone else who wishes to speak to this application? Last call. Anyone else wishing to speak to this application? Any comments from or questions from the commissioners? Uh, Commissioner Moore. This is for John. Just so I'm clear. Recreational facilities are already allowed as a special exception in the I-2, correct? This is really only to make them indoor? Uh, commercial recreation facilities. Outdoor? Uh, no, outdoor is not allowed. 27.2.36.36 recreation facilities. Okay. Or outdoors. Limited to athletic fields, tennis courts, golf courses, swimming pools. Yeah. Yep. And so th that is currently allowed. And then if you look at 327239 uh, C, indoor type B is also allowed in I2. So this would be larger indoor. To what's already allowed. Correct. <clears throat> Other comments or questions from the Commissioner Bousquet? Uh, well, I was hoping we would have a fuller room, but uh, oh. it's, going, it's going late. But I, I, I've heard testimony tonight, and I hear testimony at almost all of our, uh, our, our public hearings, that, which a lot of people come out, and I, I'm hoping that our, our uh, lawyer can comment to this. It, it almost goes to the point where people make testimony thinking or given the perception that we are driving this, that planning and zoning is looking to do this or planning and zoning is looking to do that. I hear comments such as, why would you even consider this? You know, why would you even let this application come in? Um, and we hear this all the time. And I think it's important, uh, not for me to explain it, but for, for our lawyer to explain to the general public that you know what your legal right as a citizen is to petition planning and zoning in the first place you know in a, in a short comment but just so everybody in the room knows that that everybody has that legal right to come to us 
and that's the you you set it up well. Uh, that just as a property owner has the ability if they are already an I-2 and they want to have one of the smaller indoor facilities, they're entitled to file an application, try to meet the requirements, and come in. But if you are a property owner and you look at the regs and it doesn't allow you to do something and you think it makes sense that the town change its policy, just like we can write our legislators and our legislators and ask them to propose a bill, what happens here is you're entitled to get that bill in front of this commission. If you file your application and ask for the regulations to be changed in a particular way, they, they have to hear it. I mean, you have to meet the application requirements, fill it out, pay the fee, and all of that. But if that happens, this commission is obligated to consider the request to change the policy and the regulations. Thank you. Are there any other comments from the, um, or questions from the commissioners? I'd like to make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. second. Uh, who, who is the second? No. Is there any discussion of the uh, motion to close the hearing? Those in favor of the motion to close the hearing? Aye. Those opposed? The motion carries.